Hi, I'm Eric Rangel. Last year, my low-res art project was recreating the tic-tac-toe dragon, and I did it by looking at every pixel on this shirt. And that's the result. Well, this year, I've been studying FujiNet, and I started recreating the game mechanism with Fuji apples. On the Kansas Fest Discord in Slack Fest 2023 non-contest, there is a thread called FujiNet Tic-Tac-Doe, which has a lot of links on um, information related to this project. So here is a YouTube playlist that shows um, some videos that were made as I was developing and testing the um, FujiNet applications on the Apple. And uh, here is Bob Bishop's Kansas Fest 2011 speech at a certain point where he talks about. So anyway, that was one of the, one of the, one of the things I was doing. I was also working at C for CBS on the Tic Tac Go show, as, as was mentioned. And uh, they had nine Apple computers there running the show. And they were controlled. They were actually slave computers to a... It was either an Altair or an MSI. I forget what it was. Altair. Oh, was an Apple II. Yeah, each one was a separate Apple II. The Dragon was an Apple II. That was all done with an Apple II. Each each computer had an Apple II, had a Dragon in it. Yeah, so in case it needed to to show it, it would show it. Wow, isn't that amazing? Nine Apple IIs. So um, this was a tweet uh, from John Anderson twenty one about more about jo Bob Bishop's work going to Apple II history, and this confirms that it was an Altair. It shows his Apple Vision program, and um, yeah, some fascinating information about Bob Bishop's career, which uh, I'm just beginning to explore. Okay, so what else do I have here? I have uh, interviews with Bob Bishop and a uh, radio show that he did. He was called uh, The Logic Man or something like that. So explore that at your leisure. And the GitHub for this project is here, Kansas Fest 2023. So let's explore what's in here. We have code for the Fuji Apple Tic-Tac-Doe. So TTD 2023. So these are all prefixed with integer basic system because now you can run integer basic in Protoss. And um, let's see, we have a working disk that has code used in the creation of the game, but not needed to run the game. There's some fun, uh, some fun integer basic programs. And this has the low res art from 2022 with an update to play the music in all five timbres. So let's just download that and play with it just for a second. So uh, view raw, it downloads it and show in folder, binder, and drag it to the Micromate emulator. Okay. And it boots drive one. So it loads integer on a ROM card. So here is the image. And then you press another key for the music, another key to stop the music. And uh, you could list the program and learn how it's all done. OK. So next, um, let's look at the um, TTD 2023. Let's download that. OK. And uh, run that in Micromate. OK, so this is the menu system. So for each machine that has a FujiNet that is an Apple, you're going to configure it as either a client or a server. And then you use one and two to do testing of it. And then you run clients and one server. Now, the demo I'm going to do later is using an Atari 800 as the server with two Fuji apples, because I have three Fuji nets. And uh, just to show you, you could exit to Integer Basic and type cat in capitals and see other things. So this uh, Dragon 2023 is, you can now run that, ttd.dragon.2023 or the 2022 version as an archive. So here you can list it 
and um, you can run it. So this is low res uh, plotting and V lining and integer basic logic. And you can run it here and play the music from Protoss. <laughs> so what's nice is that music logic was added to the integer basic system this year. Okay. So um, let us cat the disk again. So the um, test programs are client test and server test, and then the game server and game client. Those are the main uh, programs. And Fuji Apple is the binary ampersand logic for calling the Fuji net networking commands. And then I also have debug versions of it if you have problems to help you get more information. If you're using a 2C+, I have a hack uh, executable text file, which is described in my other videos of how to hack your 2C plus to get it to work. Because FujiNet is still in a lot of development. Um, there is a Discord for FujiNet where you could follow what's going on, but there's new hardware. There'll be new releases of the firmware. So the first step is getting a platform that works for you. And for me, I actually had to um, download the source code and build it myself to get my systems working. Okay, so um, that's basically it. But one thing I wanna show you here is a uh, test draw pick. So this is how I, um, I'm gonna reboot this again. This is how I draw the pictures in the client and server. So what I'm going to do, load, test, draw, pick. Okay. So here I have a move pick binary and uh, game picks are the saved low res pictures. And then this is for testing to see the pictures. So I go to full screen graphics mode and then I, um, really poke in the address of the picture I want to view and then call 768. So let's run this. And I type a zero and I see the dragon. I type a one. I see the X, the two for the O and the three for the kaleidoscope. Okay. So uh, what is going on here is at 768 or 300, we are using that address in six and seven and going through the uh, low res screen addresses, loading from the wherever we loaded the graphics picture. And I'm counting backwards from hex 27. So 32 plus seven is 39. So I am avoiding any screen holes as I do this memory move. So this happens to fit on page three. And uh, that's what makes it run fast when I run the game. Okay, so let's take a peek under the hood of the client test program. So uh, we are clearing out HGR and HGR2, and that's HGR2 is where the ampersand routine will get loaded. And we get out of 80 columns if it's on, and we print uh, tic-tac-toe client test. And now we need a port number for an attached Fuji Apple. So your network has an IP address and a port for each FujiNet device. Okay, and then um, I'm hard coding the IP address in line four for each computer for now. I haven't looked into what it would take to uh, go in and find the IP address via the FujiNet. Then there's a debug flag. So. Basically, this is the client, and um, we're using this to write a text file that'll be used by the game with the client's address and port number. Okay, so now um, we get that. And now let's see, we are listening for a connection. So we're building up a URL string for the end device, which is the FujiNet network device. And uh, we're using the TCP protocol and then we're putting the port number because we're just going to listen on a port number. And now we are opening a file. Um, okay, so f string, uh, let's see. Okay, we're just printing a message and now we're calling the ampersand n open f. And we're passing some variables of the mode like read and write and um, 
let's see. So this file string, that this is the specification of the network device. And then we're calling a set end of line character, and then we're checking status. So these ampersand commands are built here. So here's an open and write and control NST. So these are all the, uh, this is the ampersand code in uh, fujiapple.s of the FujiNet N handler um, GitHub. So very nicely through AppleSoft, we can make network calls. And now if um, we have not connected yet, we stay in a loop. So we have to manage how we handle connections and checking of status. And now when we get a connection, we accept it in TCP protocol. And then we get the status. And um, if we're not connected, then I want to get out of the loop. If bytes written equals zero, then 400. So uh, a bytes waiting. So while we're waiting for bytes, we stay in a loop checking our status. And now we have at least one byte waiting. We do an input uh, from the FujiNet to a string, and we print that. And then we're going to echo it back to the sender. So input and print, it's amazing. You just call this end device with standard AppleSoft commands, and it works. And then um, what I'm doing here is uh, saving the client program. Um, it needs this routine at 10,000 to uh, get started, um, initializing and loading the driver. So um, it checks if the extensions are already loaded or not, and then it deloads Fuji Apple plus an optional debug string, a different version if you want to do debugging. And then it checks some peaks and um, it checks for a character string, and that's how it knows whether it loaded it or not. Okay, so let's just list uh, 100 on again. Okay, so we've accepted a connection and it's echoing whatever the things, whatever it sends while it's connected and then it disconnects and you always do a close of the connection. And then we're saving this client any file so that we can, um, this is a standard Prodos open and write. We're printing the IP address and port number so that the server can read this text file and know how to connect to this client. And that's the client test. Now let's load TTD server test and list that. Okay, so it's similar, but um, now let's see, we are asking it for an IP address and a port of a client to be tested. So here you are the server reaching out to a specific IP address and port, and then you have debugging. So um, this came from a write TCP sample program. Okay, so now um, we check our status. Okay, we, we install the drivers. So now we're, our FujiNet string is an actual IP address, a colon, and a port. So we are reaching out to another Apple running a FujiNet, and we're trying to open it. And uh, we call open, and we check our status. And then we go to 400. I got spaghetti code. Okay, so we're going to send tic, tac, and do. So we'll go sub 335. So it's going to try to write the word tick to the network connection. And it's sending the string and the length. And then the status is uh, checking the bytes. And I have a little delay loop uh, for each write. Um, so this is how you communicate. You set a string, and then you write. You check your status, making sure that all the bytes got out um, until the status is clean. And then, um, yeah, so the, this delay loop, but in the actual game, I did check for like connections and disconnections. But what's good about this is you can learn client server programming and all the gotchas that happen with it. So that when I have successfully tested, I ask, do you want to save it? And it's saving it to a file name of box zero, box one through nine. So, I'm uh, BX is the number. So on the tic-tac-toe board, there are boxes one through nine, and then it saves uh, the IP address and port for the box 
So the server now knows how to connect to the client with what which IPM port to use. So this is the test program which is required in order to set up each um, client and server to run the game. Okay, what's running on this Apple II C Plus with a FujiNet? We're gonna run the tic-tac-toe client. Okay, and it is waiting on port 6501. And on this 2GS, we're gonna run another client. And this one is going to wait on port 6500. Now we just need an Altair. Turn on this Atari 800, which has this orange FujiNet. And you hear some beeping because the monitor is here. Okay, and we are running FujiNet Atari Tic Tac Doe Server. Okay, let's get a close-up view of that. And we are going to pick a box. So let's pick uh, the box for the Apple IIc Plus. What we're going to do is send a dragon to box one. So you type box one and command D. And you just heard the 2C plus beep and it sent back an ack. And what did we get? A dragon. Okay, now let's watch the GS. So let's send to box two an X. And we get an X. And then let's send an O to the 2C plus. So the odd numbers are the 2C plus and the even numbers are the 2GS for this demo. So I hit box three and we're gonna put an O and let's watch the dragon turn into an O. Yay. Okay, and what other things can we do? We can play music. So let's go to uh, box four and type an M. And the 2GS responds with an ack and disconnects when it is done playing the music. Now, let's go to box five and do a kaleidoscope. Okay, so it's currently displaying an O. And there is the kaleidoscope. Now on the Atari, I put an input statement saying press return to disconnect. So the kaleidoscope will keep going until I press return and then the 2C plus should detect the connection is disconnected. And now let's send a dragon. Um, okay, five. Okay, so I have to do uh, five D. Okay, that works. Now let's uh, put some money on this. Let's do a dollar sign. Let's do box six and do a dollar sign and say this is gonna be, okay, that got a knack because um, the dollar sign command requires another character. So let's try um, dollar sign, okay, box six and a dollar sign five. And it scrolls until it reaches 500. Okay, and let's keep working on the GS. Let's do uh, box eight, and let's do a category, and let's give it a category name. And the category name is Apple History, and that is a low-res font that can be used to display that category. And uh, let's see what else we can do. Let's send it a question. Let's do, um, Box eight, question. And the question is, um, who in, okay, here's your question. Who invented the Apple one? So then if the player gets it right, they get an X. And that's how you play tic-tac-toe.